Okay everyone, I did it. I finally opened the box and oh my goodness, it is so fun. Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am really glad you did. In this video, we're going to be playing around with the Glimmer Hot Foil Machine by Spellbinders and it is so fun to use. I've been having a lot of fun with it behind the scenes. So truth be told, I was a little intimidated to open this box. I was a little nervous to start, but once I did, it was so fun to use. So I'm going to show you the whole process from start to finish today and I hope you fall in love with this as well because it is so so pretty when used on cards. So we're going to be using a little bit of gold foil today in the card that I want to put together for you. We're going to be doing so many fun things with this card today. We're going to obviously be using the hot foil machine to do a really pretty foiling technique. And then we're going to stencil and ink blend on top of that. And this card turns out so beautiful. I really took my time behind the scenes playing around with this and I'm really falling in love with it. So go ahead and give this a thumbs up if you are really excited to learn about hot foil. It is really fun and it's really addicting too. I actually had to go get a couple more hot foil plates after playing around with this because it's so neat that I just want to keep going and going and going. All right, let's go ahead and get started and be sure to check out the description box below as I'll be sure to link everything that I'm using in this video today. All right, everyone, let's get started foiling. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I am so excited to play around with this again because it is so much fun. I'm actually upping my relaxation game and I have a candle off to the side. It's peach Prosecco and it smells like heaven. I didn't want it to be do too distracting, so I put it off to the side, but I am going to slow down and relax and have so much fun building this card. So it's probably going to be a little bit longer of a card build, but I hope you can relax right along with me. So I have my Glimmer Hot Foil machine here. I also have the gold hot foil. This did come with my Glimmer machine. So it's nice because you can kind of get your feet wet with a little complimentary roll. So in terms of design for this card, I'm going to be focusing on this really pretty stamp set. In fact, I'm not going to use the floral part because I'm going to be using the hot foil. So I won't be stamping this portion, but I'm going to be using the sentiment stamps for this. If you don't have hot foil and you fall in love with this look, you can definitely get this stamp set and do a stamped version of the card, either by stamping and coloring, or you could do some dry embossing and water coloring. The possibilities are endless, but I'm going to do this stamp set. I'm also going to be using using the hot foil plate. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. And then I have the coordinating die as well as I purchased the stencils and the stencils are so neat because you can layer them one on top of another and create just a really pretty stenciled look and the ink blending is just going to look so fun and buttery. So that is where I am going in terms of supplies. Of course, I will link everything that I'm using in the description box below this video because I will be sneaking in quite a few things to this video to bring this card together. That way you can just head on down there into the little box below the video and take a quick look or a closer look at any of the things I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my glimmer machine. And as you can see, it has a red light here. And once this turns green, then we will be ready to start the foiling process. So it's really, really easy to use. In fact, it comes with a couple of other things. So it comes with this thin shim. It also comes with the spacer pad as well. And I will go through how to use all of this. You also do have a little heat mat where you can rest your hot foil plate once it comes off of the hot foil platform. And then there's also a little magnetic, um, I call it kind of a little gripper, but it what it does is it helps pick up the foil plate from the hot foil platform once it's hot. That way you can protect your little fingers. So we'll come to this a little bit later, but for now I'm gonna set that off to the side. And what I'm gonna do is simply wait for this little platform to be ready and heated up. Now I'm gonna give you a couple tips on what I found to be really successful, but honestly, they're all in the manual. And uh, I actually spent some time reading through the little manual slash directions that came through this. And on the last page, it does give some glimmer tips and facts for helping be successful. And you know what? I read this whole thing because 
that is my idea of a good time, I suppose. <laughs> so I did read through this and I found the tips to be really, really beneficial. So I'll go ahead and just show you how I'm going to hot foil today. And hopefully you're inspired to give this a try too, because it's really beautiful. Plus there are so many other hot foil rolls that you can invest in to create some different looks. Okay, so time to start working because my platform base is ready. So I need to have everything prepped and ready to go. So I do have a little scrap piece of foil that came off of another project that is the perfect size for what I'm doing. And I have my hot foil plate. Now, one of the tips was to make sure you don't have too much foil because then you could have over foiling. So what I'm going to do is just simply place my die right over my foil and then I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and all I'm going to do is just remove any of the excess. Now let me make sure I remember which way this is going to go down. So it's going to go, no that's right Bethany, that's right. Okay I just want to make sure I am cutting it in the correct direction. So I'm just going to trim off this excess here and excess here. And maybe here, kind of rounding those corners anywhere that there's just a little too much. And I think for now that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll take just a tad more off of this side. You could also do this with a rotary cutter or any other uh, method that you find best. So now that that is ready to go, I am going to undock my base here. And the reason is, once you pull it out, it kind of jolts a little bit. So I don't want to ruin anything by pulling it out. So I don't want it to mess up my alignment. So I'm going to get my foil really quickly. And first I'll lay down my die. Okay. And then I'm going to place the foil pretty side down. Okay. So I'll place that right over that. And then I'm going to grab a piece of this hammer mill cardstock. Let me tell you, I have never known the term smooth until I felt this cardstock. It is butter. So I'm just going to make sure that I have that placed all the way over. And then the next thing I'll do is place my thin shim. And spacer. And then I am ready to go. And since it's already undocked, then I don't have to really pull hard and misalign any of the alignment that I just did. Okay, bringing in my spell binders, what I'm going to do is place it right into my machine here. Okay, and then I am simply going to go very slowly and run it through slow. So taking my time. Going nice and slow. And I'm going slow, that way I can allow each section to foil, if that makes sense. And then I can simply take it out the back. Okay. And then I can remove my spacer pad and my shim. Ooh, it looks like it's clinging. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'll move those to the side. I can also bring in my little rest mat plus the little magnetic grabber tool. And then I'm just going to grab my paper. And now this is where you pray. You pray that it worked. <laughs> so then I'm just going to grab a little corner of the foil so we can pull it up. Oh my goodness, it worked perfectly. <laughs> I'm surprised every time that it does. I don't think I have a single speck on there that I need to take off. Now, if you do end up having any over foiling or any foil in areas that you did not intend, then all you can do simply is, let me move this off so it's just a magnet, of course, and then it can cool over here. Okay. All you can do is I have a little eraser off to the side. It's just a simple eraser. You can erase anywhere that you have unwanted foil. I did 
I kind of thought that if you went over the foil, it kind of dulled it with the eraser. I don't know. Let me know if you've seen that. It could have been just, um, I don't know. It could have been me just imagining it. But I did, um, when I was playing around with this, have a little over foiling before. And I try to not go completely over the foil because I thought it kind of dulled it a little bit, but it takes it right off. I won't be obviously demonstrating that in this because that was perfection. So there it is. Okay, now what I can do is I'm going to simply turn this off because we're done with the foiling part of this card. And now we're going to have some fun stenciling and ink blending. It's going to be so cute. Also, I did want to mention that you can keep this piece and you can further do hot foil with the negative. So it's really, really fun. Keep it in your stash or right after this, just go ahead and refoil onto a next set of cardstock. That way it's all ready to go for your next project. That would be gorgeous as well. And then you could just use the coordinating die to die cut it out. It would be so pretty. Okay, maybe at the end, maybe at the end, if I have time, I'll use this. So let's see, let's see how this whole process goes. Okay, this candle smells like butter. I am in heaven right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little piece of pink tape and all I'm gonna do is just place it right on my cardstock. That way it doesn't shift while I do the stenciling part. Okay, let's bring in some ink. I have a lot of fun ink I want to use. I have Sweet Mustard by Pink Fresh Studio. I also have Marigold. Then I have Mint and I have Meadow. And then we're gonna bring in a nice dark navy. This is called Storm. And we'll play around with this later when we're stamping. So those are the inks that I decided to pull for this project. So let's grab the stencils. In terms of stencils, there are four. And I didn't mention, but I wanted to note, they also have some sentiments that you can use as well. So we have a hello, congrats, miss you, and thanks. So if you felt inclined to use that as well, you certainly could. I'm gonna do my sentiment a little bit differently, so I'm not gonna use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my first stencil and I am going to just line this up. Now you could do all of these flowers a different color if you'd like, and you could just mask off the ones that you do not want to get ink on. For this card, I am going to just do all one color because I have a specific look that I'm kind of going for and so I thought just one color would help me to achieve that. Okay, so I have it lined up pretty well, I think. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna place some tape to the left and right. That way my stencil stays secure. Although, you know what, Bethany, you could use your little magnets Oh well. Okay, so I'm going to start with my lighter color and I'm gonna grab a little blending brush. I also have this little silicone mat from Concord and Ninth that I like to use. It just kind of helps to keep the little ink cubes steady while I am placing the blending brush over them. I did get a little mat for placing my ink cubes in, but that hasn't arrived yet, so I'm gonna play around with that when it comes to. I'm going to tap off the excess and then my goal here is I want to do more concentrated color towards the center of each flower and then kind of go a little bit lighter towards the edges. That's the goal but we'll see. I'm going to go a little darker. See right there just a little darker and then kind of light towards the edges and then I can I really want to get those tiny blending brushes. Oh, I think that looks nice. Okay, hopefully that's showing well on camera, but in person it looks really pretty. Okay, it might be a little harder on these smaller ones, but trying to do more concentrated towards the center and then kind of just fade out towards the edge. I think that would be pretty. Okay, and I'll just continue that on. I find the blending to just be very relaxing. So focusing on the center there, and then I just kind of go all the way out. 
Ooh, I think I'm, I think I'm impressing myself here. Okay. And this one, so focusing on the center. And then doing a whole blend out. In fact, I can do a little bit more on that one. Oh, so pretty. I like that. I really like that. Okay. And then I'm just gonna continue that same technique on each of the flowers. So truth be told, I bought this because the amazingly talented Kathy Zilski had it on her channel. I'm obsessed with her videos, they are gold. If you have not followed her yet, or if you're not following her yet, stop what you're doing right now and go follow her. It's the best decision you'll ever make. It. She's just amazing. But I saw her playing around with hot foil on her channel and so then the next time I was at the craft store, I saw it and it was on a pretty good sale, at least I thought. So it had already been on my heart to buy it for a little bit. So once I saw it in person, I was, I was a little quick to rush it into my cart because I've been really wanting it. Okay, I think that looks really good. So I am going to peel up my stencil, salvaging the tape because I want to reuse it for each layer. Oh my goodness. So pretty. And then of course you'll want to clean off of off your stencils so they're ready to go for the next one. Make sure you do front and back too because sometimes it can get onto the back and you don't want it to transfer over to your next project. Okay grabbing my next stencil but also cleaning off my board in between. Let's keep this organized here. The next color, of course, will be marigold. And let's see, the next stencil has the word congrats on it, just for reference. And it's going to focus on, if you notice there, it's going to focus on the middle of the flowers. So kind of the inside pieces. So I'm going to center that once more. I think that looks aligned. Is there something on my stencil that's making a mark on my paper. Oh, what in the world? Hold on. I gotta clean that. It's making a mark on my paper. I am going to be, oh goodness. I'm going to be trimming this down obviously with the dye, but I don't want that to just smudge all over. Oh goodness. Okay, don't judge me by what's going on up there. I promise, I promise this is going to turn out, at least I hope so. But if we're gonna have a smudge on any part of this project, I, I will take it right up there. Absolutely, okay. And tape and tape. Okay, and then I will go with this marigold color which again is just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna try to do, it's probably not going to work as well just because I have a smaller surface area, but if I can, I'm gonna try to do my middles a little darker and then fade out, but we'll see. So middle and then kind of fade out. This big one here. And then of course you can also grab the excess that you tap onto your mat. Ooh, I think that is looking good. Okay, time will tell. And if not, you can lay down the stencil and continue blending. That's the best part. I'm kind of a, a, adopting the motto. I'm not sure if anyone's ever adopted it before. I'm sure, I'm sure they have, but um, it's not over till it's in the envelope. <laughs> I kind of keep reminding myself that because, you know, sometimes you do have to revisit it a little bit. Okay, let's see how that turned out. So I'm just gonna whoop, peel these up. Oh, 
Oh, that's pretty. I think I could do a little more though. I think I could do just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that back down. Whoops, line it up nice. I feel like it was a tad too subtle and I am simple. I really like simple, but I also want this to be enough of a contrast to appreciate that there is a little bit of layering occurring on on here because that will make it a little bit more dimensional so I'm going to bump these up just a little bit more and we'll see how that turns out there we go that's much more intentional I really like that okay so again cleaning off my stencil and then grabbing the next one okay nice and clean nice and clean put you away and then I'm gonna grab mint which is the lighter of the two and then the stencil that says miss you and I'm just, I'm just referencing our little sentiments on there just so it's easy to differentiate. There we go. And I'm going to need a different blending brush, grabbing my green. I'm going to just run this over a paper towel really quick just to make sure there's nothing on there that I didn't want. Actually, that was pretty clean. So mint, here we come. Okay, so... I feel like mint, yes, mint you can kind of go pretty heavy handed on just to get it to show up. <laughs> it's pretty light. And because these are all so teeny tiny, I'm not gonna really worry about doing any sort of fading. I'm just gonna blend it right on there. And bumping it up a couple times because a pretty faint one it's a beautiful but you don't have to be as light with it now if you were going to be using this as your card panel you would want to mask off up here so that you don't blend ink up there but again I'm gonna be trimming this down with the dye so I'm not I'm not worried about any ink blending off of the stencil that's just fine That looks really nice. I think I'm happy with that. Yes, maybe one more right there. Okay, again, you can always add more. As long as you align your stencil, you are good to go. And oh, look! Oh, so pretty. So to me, this looks like, I'm going to wipe off my stencil down here. This looks like something that would have been like on my grandmother's apron or something like that. It's just, I don't know. There's something about it that kind of just reads grandmother's apron. I don't know. So I was really kind of inspired by this color combo plus just the look of this that that's why I'm just going to continue with one color for the flowers and see it through I just think that that's so pretty okay I'm going to align the thanks which is the fourth and final stencil I think that's lined up good one and two clean off the mint, bring in meadow. Okay. And here we go. So this one's just adding a little bit of definition to the center of those leaves, much like what we were doing with the second stencil for the flowers. And this goes on really nice, this meadow.
focusing it's just tiny little pieces it's focusing on the middle of the leaves it's so pretty so pretty I just had to have this set it was too good okay then taking this off oh my goodness that's so pretty I think I got a little misaligned there but you know what it's it's pretty faint and I think in the large scheme of the whole card I probably am going to forget about it later on. Okay, wiping off my stencil and my mat, plus the back of my stencil. Okay, setting that to the side, let's cut this out with the coordinating die. Okay, bringing in the coordinating die and lining it up just so. And I'm gonna tape that down just so it doesn't shift we can get the alignment perfect or close to. Okay, I'm going to try not to get the tape on my foil. I'm not sure it, if it would ruin it, but it just makes me nervous, so I'm going to avoid it. So I'm just gonna place the tape on the die and then the surrounding paper, and then I'll run this through my Spellbinders really quickly, and then we will continue building this card up. Oh my goodness, I figured it out. You remember earlier when I had black on this paper? All of a sudden I turned around and it was just everywhere. It was like on my table, just smearing everywhere. I figured out it's from my candle. Here I am trying to have a relaxing evening and my candle is stressing me out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so tip number 32. Should you have a candle, make sure it is clean, clean burning. Okay. Now, I will say, I find that the hammer mills would be just a tad more delicate than normal paper. So you want to be really careful when taking your tape off. And it's, I've, only, I've only noticed the delicacy with the tape. So just be gentle. Okay, here is how this turned out. That is so pretty. That is so, so pretty. Let's go ahead and start building up our card panel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some embossing. I'm gonna grab an embossing folder and my card panel, and we're just gonna really have fun getting this all pretty, and I think it's gonna turn out really, really nice. Okay, I have my card panel here, and I also have this pretty embossing folder. I'm gonna do my best to find the source for this. I've had this for a while and I just cannot remember where I got it, but I really love it. It's just a simple, bold line and or stripe, if you will. And it's just really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna locate which side I want to, oh, you know what? Before I do this though, I want to trim this down. So I'm gonna bring out my little A2 layer die set. I just got these Avery L pouches and truth be told, I got them because I have certain things that I craft with over and over. And so I wanted to keep a pouch of the things I grab for the most. That way they are just always at an arm's reach yet organized. I'm gonna grab the second one in. And the reason I'm doing this first is I want to have it trimmed down before I use my embossing folder because if I use my embossing folder and then go to run it through with the die, it makes sense to me that it would ruin the embossed look. Like it would press into it and it would lose its like vibrancy. So I don't know, I just do this first. So taping this down, I'm gonna run this through and then we will do the embossing folder. Okay, there we go. Now that's all trimmed down. And now I will grab the embossing folder. So I wanna do it this way. And because there are definite lines on this, you wanna make sure it's lined up nice. I always think that if your lines are off, it, it really does, it really does draw the eye. Now you can wet down your paper if you'd like and do a little mist. I don't do that, um, but you can take that step if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my machine and I'm, I can't wait to see how this turns out. It's This is a pretty embossing folder. I think you're gonna really like it. Okay, opening up and oh, it's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? 
I love it. Oh, it's just something, right? Because this is going to be kind of it for the card. I'm just using, I mean, I'm going to do my sentiment, of course, but I didn't want to just put this on a plain white panel. I just thought it needs something more. And I think the subtle line that that embossing folder gave, I think that's just gorgeous. Okay, let's go ahead. Now, one thing I want to do, I'm going to bring back my yellow blending brush. I Now, you can do your card this way and have your design this way, right? But I wanna do it this way. I think that'd be pretty. To bring in just a little bit more and just a little bit more visual interest, I'm gonna take this off for a second. I'm just gonna use whatever's left over on my yellow brush. And I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of yellow and kind of be subtle, but just bring in a little bit of color, just really light. It's kind of just like a dusting, if you will. Okay, it's just a little bit. I'm not even grabbing any ink. I'm just using what's on the brush. Okay. And then It's just a little, a little something. Okay, and you'll see it more when we place it on our card base because again, that pan the panel is trimmed down. So we're gonna have a surrounding white border. Now you could do even more or less, but I think that that just light dusting of yellow, I think it's simple, but it just does something. Let's bring our card uh, base in real quick because now I wanna build this all from the ground up. So let's get that all scored and ready to go. Okay, bringing in my score buddy here, I have a piece of paper that is 11 by four and a quarter, and I'm gonna make this an A2 size that's top folding. So again, 11 inches. But because half is five and a half, that's where I will score to bring it right in half. And then our final card will be four and a quarter by five and a half. That is so cute. I love the top folding ones. Okay, now I've gotten that a little off. You know what? I need to refold that. I don't know what I was doing. Let me see if I can fix it. If not, I'm gonna refold because I must have not had it aligned just so. Let me try again. Sometimes you can fix, oh, yep, yeah, it's just a fraction of a degree off and boy, oh goodness, does that make, does that make a difference? Okay, let me refold this. I think I can fix it, I don't wanna waste. I don't want to waste, and I know the person I'm giving this to wouldn't want me to. Okay, fold this nice. And I'm just gonna kind of force it to take on the second score line. We've all done this, right? We have all done this, relatable moment. But let's focus on the fact that the foiling turned out so great. So if we're gonna have a little snafu, let it be with the card base. Okay. I think that's better. Yep. Okay. Salvaged. Always just try again. Okay. Now I'll bring in some foam tape and I'm going to make sure everything is nice and clean. And let's build up this card. Okay. Turning over my card panel. Locating my scissors. Okay. I'm just going to do strips of foam tape on the back. I also just got in the mail some fun foam. I've never used it. And I think, I think it's at the A2 size. So I was kind of thinking of using that for my the back of my panel. Let me know if you've used it for that before or what you've used fun foam for yourself with your own cards or in your craft space. But the strips are just as easy. Okay, peeling this off. 
And then I like to just build it from the ground up if I can. Okay, bringing this card in and see that subtle yellow once it's on the card base? It's just there. I just like that. I think it's pretty. Okay, now I think we have a lot of dimension with the panel being bumped up off of the card base as well as our dry embossing here. So I I really think I just want to simply lay this on the card. I don't think I'm gonna pop this up anymore. I'm gonna do some dimension with the sentiment, but as for this, a little glue is all I'm going to do. So I'm gonna grab this Barely Art glue. I'm also going to use some tweezers just to get this all nice and ready to place down. And just a little glue. You could also use tape runner. Okay, and then I'm gonna do that right here. Bring it up a little bit. Okay, I think that looks so nice. Okay, how are we doing? Is everybody still watching? If so, give me a yellow heart. I think that would be so fitting for this pretty yellow card. Leave a yellow heart if you are still watching and ready to see how we're gonna take this to the finish line. Okay, let me grab some card stock. I'm thinking, you know what I think? I am always inclined to do white, but I, I pulled this navy because I think navy would be so pretty. I like navy with a nice mint and yellow. I think I'm gonna do navy for my sentiment and sub-sentiment. So I'm going to use this Simon Says Stamp Small Script Trio. I'll link it down below. I've used this before on other cards. It's so pretty. And it has loved hugs and thanks. I'm gonna use the thanks for this. And I'm going to cut it three times out of this nice navy. So let me just trim this down. Let's see which way. I think I'll use this side. One, two, three. Save as much as I can. And this is just a scrap piece I had. And that way we can just layer it on up. I think that will be nice. I'm going to use liquid glue for stacking. And let's just stack these up to make them really nice and thick. So you don't need a lot, just a little. And the precision tip will be your best friend for this. It can be a little bit of a delicate part of the card, but you won't regret the stack die cut. It's, it's funny how simple yet noticeable it is. It's one of those things that I think elevates the card and you're kind of wondering, why does that look so good? It's because it's stacked. Okay, and it just looks nice and thick. I, I think, I always say, I think it looks like chipboard once everything is all stacked. Ooh, that went down nice. Very good, okay. One, and let's do one more. I think that's good. Where are my tweezers? I'm just gonna make sure. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, let's pause and pray for the next next layer here. Oh, I gotta clean off that tip a little bit. Got a little gunky. Okay, there we go. Just takes a tiny bit. And final stack. Now the glue does dry clear. So you can you can breathe knowing that if you have any glue seeping out, which usually happens, then it will dry. Okay, I'm going to use my little scraper here. Delicate, delicate. 
Okay, let me place that up here. I'm going to, whoa, I got a little bit of glue everywhere there. And I'm going to let that just settle with a block, just like that. While that is settling, I'm going to bring my Misty in and I'm going to stamp out the sub sentiment with that nice dark blue ink. Okay, here is my Misty. I'm going to go ahead and just use a little piece of scrap paper that I have. It's 80 pounds in the Nina Solar White. And let's locate the sub sentiment. So there are so many things that you can do. Sending you so much love. Can't wait to see you again. Now this is something to celebrate. Wondering how you've been. Your dedication means so much to me. Couldn't be happier for you. And I am smiling because of you. So I'm going to use the I am smiling because of you. I think it pairs really nice with the thanks. I just like that. So I'm going to just place this on my cardstock here. And being careful not to distort its alignment. And right in the center is fine because I'm gonna die cut this out with a banner. Nope, not a banner. Yes, yes, a banner, yes fighting with myself. Okay. Close that, clean that up and make sure it's nice and conditioned here. Okay. I spoke to this color earlier. I'm going to use this pretty color called storm by pink fresh studio. Now, initially when it goes down on this first pass, it's going to be pretty blue. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of like the blue pen, right? Everybody knows the blue pen, but, or maybe not, but I mean like a traditional blue pen is what I mean, but I'm going to stamp it a few times and each time, now it's pretty delicate. So really just a light rub of your finger will be just fine here. Oh, you know, it kind of smudged in the middle. Let me grab my stamp chamois. Looks like a little ink got kind of smudged in there. Let's see if I can remedy that. Okay, let's do this. Bring it up a little bit and we'll just try again. I think I'll still have enough room. Yes, I'll still have enough room to do my little banner. Okay, let's try one more time. It's like a little mark in there. I might need to clean my stamp off. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp this three times just to really make that darker. You know, it's still there. It's right at the amp. Do you see that little dot? Let me clean my stamp and then I'm going to turn it over and do it at the bottom. So I'll, just, I'll situate that up. Okay. Let me clean this really nice. Actually, I'll leave it there. I'm going to get some stamp cleaner. If we can really get this good. Must be just a little something in there. So it's hair washing day for this stamp. It's gonna get a good spa day. Let me see. I think that's much better. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of settle and re-stamp. Okay, so I can bring this down again because I'm gonna realign my stamp here. Okay, clean that up, place that down. Okay, third time is the charm here. And three times stamping. So we'll do one. Ah, oh, pretty. I need to press down in the middle a little bit more, but other than that, at least we have that gunky little, I don't know, maybe it was just a tiny piece of lint or something. Okay, focus on that middle part. Two. See how it gets darker? That is really far down there, sorry. And I think three. 
is just going to be perfect. Again, I'm just layering it because I want a darker color. I want to take on a little bit more, that's it, of the cardstock that will be accompanying it. Okay, so I'll take this, I'll just take that off in a minute. Let's grab the die, the banner die, which is just this banner die from, is it Lawn Fawn? I'll link it below, I love it. And I'm gonna focus on aligning the right side. And I think that looks good. I'll run that through and then we are almost done. Okay, final little part in this process. And then the final card is on its way. That looks pretty. Now what I will do is I'll set this to the side and then I'm gonna trim that down a little bit just with some scissors, nothing, nothing too fancy. And let's finish this card. Okay, final elements coming together. Got our little thanks. And I'm going to take and trim down just about there. Okay. And I'm thinking I'll do thanks. I am smiling because of you. Maybe actually down more. I want it to be, I don't want it to be center. That is exactly what I want. Okay, that looks so nice. Okay, now, okay, sorry, my heater's gonna turn on really quickly. Now I'm gonna pop up just this sentiment, but I'm gonna do glue for my nice scripty things. I think that will look nice, but let me do, I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna use these really thin strips. I think I might need a little bit more than that though. Maybe, the thin are so nice because, actually I have one cut in two up here. So let's see. Roughly, come here. Let's do that much. Okay. Put that behind. Okay. I think that will look really, really nice. So let me grab my little T-square ruler that I am obsessed with. I'm gonna decide on my alignment here before anything else. Again, bringing down, I think, I think there looks nice, okay. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put that there so I know where it's gonna go. Take off my backer. Okay, and using tweezers to place. Whoop, I kinda got cleaned there, didn't I? That's okay, I'll just bring that up. Oh, I think that looks nice. Okay, and then just liquid glue. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna attach this real quick. And then bring in that Barely Art glitter, or nope, not glitter, just Barely Art glue. I'm used to saying glitter glue, because I, I do like the Art glitter glue. Oops, got a little heavy handed there. But when my Art glitter glue ran out, I decided to give this a try, and I'm not disappointed. Works great. I kind of find that I have fallen in love with a lot of different adhesives. <laughs> I really have. I, maybe I'm easily impressed, but I like a lot of different ones. I'm, they all make me happy. They all kind of serve their purpose. But respectively, they kind of all do the same thing too. Okay, so. 
right there. I think that's pretty. And that layered look looks so nice because now it just has a little element of dimension in and of itself. Okay, let me find my block, which is here, and just kind of lightly press that one. And then I'm going to add a couple little dew drop embellishments just to subtly bring a little finish to this card, and then we're done. I've had these little waffle flower dew drop embellishments in my craft space for a while now, and I thought you know, they're nice and subtle. I thought they would be the nice, a nice finishing look to this card. So I'm going to grab my little pokey tool here and just bring a few up and onto my card. I like that they're subtle and there, but not necessarily going to overpower the gold foil because I love a shiny embellishment at the end. But the shine is in the foil for me here. So, whoops. So I think I'm gonna do that. And just be a little bit looks fine. A little bit safer with just a little drop. Oh, those those are pretty. Okay, and then final right here. I think that's pretty. Okay. My goodness, this really, really brought in a lot of fun supplies and a lot of fun technique, I think. I, I just really like it when, well, you'll see in a moment, when your craft space is just such a mess because you were able to bring in so many different things, so many different accessories, so many different tools to bring this together. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am always refreshed that I can have a little canvas that is four and a quarter by five and a half and just focus so intently on one tiny little rectangle really. And it's just so really, I mean, it's really fun to pour your heart just into such a tiny space. And I find that to be really refreshing. I find it to be relaxing, refreshing, and I hope you enjoyed this as well. So I hope this helped you kind of get an idea of the process for hot foil. And maybe if you are nervous to open the box, I definitely was nervous to open the box. I hope that this kind of inspired you that just open it and play around and have fun because it's so pretty. I definitely invested in a lot more hot foil plates after playing around with the hot foil machine because I can definitely see myself using this so much with my card making. I hope this was helpful and relaxing and inspiring or all in the above. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. All right, everyone. See you later. And now time to clean.